So they do, welcome back. Get ready to start my next project. Uh, this is gonna be a repeat build. Uh, I built this one a couple years ago for my display. It was kind of a last minute prop that I put together. Uh, even though you can see I definitely put some you know time into it. I didn't really put any real details into it. It's very plain, very straightforward. So I wanna build another one. Uh, I wanna make it a little bit bigger. I wanna definitely make it wider, longer, for sure taller. Uh, the section down there where you see my the, my beloved, I want to make like recess looking panels down there. Uh, I want the base to be at least 30 inches tall. So I want it to look much, uh, much larger, much bigger, much more decorative, you know, kind of thing, a little bit more on the fancier end. Uh, and then when I built this one, I didn't really make a video of how I built it, but it's essentially made from a mixture of a mannequin, pool noodles, fiberglass, a styrofoam head from Hobby Lobby, and a cheap wig. I'm going to be kind of doing the same with this next one as far as uh, what I'll be using, but I am going to be going a slightly different route to make it lighter, and I'm not going to do the flowers on this one. I'm going to go with, I'm going to go with a different, you know, kind of thing on this, on this one, so you'll just have to wait and see what I do there. So I hope you enjoy this video, and uh, let's get started. All right, this will be the start of it. This is the main piece right here that I have to work with first. This is kind of step one. Now, I won't be actually using the mannequin on the prop itself. Uh, all I'm going to be using this for is essentially be making my body form, my body shape. So I'll be pulling the arms off. I'm going to cover the whole thing in plastic, masking tape, all that kind of stuff, just to make sure I get all the proper contours, all the proper shapes. And then once I put three layers of fiberglass mat over top of it, I put, peel that fiberglass off. It'll give me a body uh, form. So once it lays down on top of the prop, and I put the dress on there, it'll, it'll, it'll give me the contours that I need. And by doing it with the fiberglass, one is going to keep the weight down too. If say I want to pose it, like maybe have one leg that's kind of sit up a little bit, I can make notches in the fiberglass and make it to where I can get different shapes and different angles with it, that kind of stuff. And then I will come up with a solution for the arms and I'll just pick up, you know, a styrofoam head from Hobby Lobby and a wig and all that kind of stuff for the rest of the, the build. Uh, so this is going to be step one. So I'm going to go ahead and get started on uh, prepping this uh, to put fiberglass on it. All right, I'm at this point right here. I went ahead and uh, picked up some of that expansion foam uh, that a lot of times you'll see for like fence posts instead of pouring concrete in there. It's like a two-part expansion foam you can pour into fence posts. Uh, one thing wasn't enough to do the entire thing all the way. So I had a regular can of just regular expansion foam that I just you know put in here just as a little extra. Uh, the reason for the expansion foam is to just make it nice and solid. So like when you, when you hit this thing, it's it's nice and solid now. It's not going to tweak or bend or anything like that. It'll also make it to where, say I want to change the pose, like say I want to maybe make one leg look like it's kind of coming up and bent. I can make notches like here and then here. And then when I, you know, bend the leg up and then bend it down, that gives me something solid to, you know, still re retain the shape uh, that I wanted to retain. Two, uh, this also made it extremely light still. Uh, the only thing I have left now is all this excess along the bottom here. I got to cut all this excess off so I have a nice even plane across the uh, the bottom. But the next step is just to kind of get an idea of uh, how I want it to be posed. Start making arms and then go from there. Okay, I made it to this point right here. Um, right now, at this point, I'm trying to decide how big the structure is going to be that this is going to be sitting on top of. Uh, with the styrofoam head on there, I measured everything. It comes out to 69 inches long, 
Uh, by the time I do some kind of arms on here, I'll probably be somewhere around 18 inches wide. But I want to make sure that it doesn't look like it's barely sitting on top of this thing. I want some extra material. So the actual structure is going to end up being about 30 inches wide by 82 inches long. And I want to try to go 30 inches tall before this is on top of it. So by the time this is on top of it, I'll actually be closer to about 40 inches tall. Uh, but obviously, you know, the uh, foam board can only come 4 by 18. So to maximize out the material, I'm going to cut them directly in half of 2 feet. And what I'll be doing is I'll be essentially adding essentially a lower base that I'll be able to use to kind of build it up. And then I'll be adding an upper section that I could use to build up a little more and then the top cap. So this way I can maximize out how much material I'm going to use. Uh, so this way I'm not end up with a bunch of small strips that I can't use for nothing. So, but I'm going to go ahead and get my foam board over here, start making some lines, some measurements on it, see how it's going to work out, see if I like the way it's going to work out. So let's go ahead and get started on that. All right, I believe I got all the math figured out of essentially what size I'm going to be making my top piece that she will be on top of and then the base piece that this will be sitting on top of. The original size I was originally going to go with I believe was 30 by 82. But once I uh, carved out the foam so I can get the head to sit where it needs to sit, I was able to actually drop that down substantially. So now the new size is going to be 72 by 26. That will be the top plate right here. The bottom stand that it's going to be sitting on will be 64 by 18. What that's going to do is that's going to give me a, a four inch lip all the way around the entire perimeter of that which is going to allow me to be able to take the two inch foam flip it up on end and run it up underneath the bottom of it giving me that look of almost like building it out almost like a like a molding kind of thing my original idea of making it 30 inches tall uh, is going to work so well i'm still going to get close to that but in, in order to maximize out the usage of this of my three quarter you know wall board here I'm going to end up making the, uh, the base only two feet tall, 24 inches, so I can literally split this right down the center. That'll maximize out how much material that I'm using. And then what I'll do is when I go to build this out, I'll use this to build out, you know, by adding a couple layers to make this a little taller. So hopefully I can get it closer to my 30 inches, and then obviously she'll be on top, which is going to make the structure look much taller. Uh, but you see what I did here is I did a, a three a three inch stair step on the bottom to match the three inch of uh, the three quarter material that's just below the top piece here. Then I added the two inch material, two inch material here, which allowed me to use that same two inch material uh, to create like these nice little corner posts here, which gave me like this nice little box. And then I added two more right there, which gave me all these little boxes. Now, if I can find something that I can stick inside these boxes that kind of looks really cool or kind of look unique or kind of you know, kind of fits kind of like the, the overall theme, I guess you could say. I'm going to go ahead and put those in there. Of course, I got to be able to find eight of them so I can do the whole thing. Uh, if not, I'll just finish getting everything caulked and I'll just go ahead and paint that as is. Uh, one of the next steps going to be is you can see where uh, I got an arch going here for some reason. I might, I guess when I cut it, maybe I cut too high or something. I'm not sure. So I'm going to do a relief cut right at the hip. Now I'm not going to cut it all the way through. I'm only going to cut it to a certain point and essentially leave a certain, uh, just a little bit to kind of create like a hinge kind of deal. So this way, when I put the fabric on it, you don't see like a like a, a line. You don't see like a hard line. It, it made a nice little transition. Then I'm going to put a pillow up underneath the head to raise the head up, and I'm going to raise the front of the torso up just a little bit to kind of make it look like the kind of like you know in a little bit of like a sleeping position with a nice pillow up underneath them kind of thing. So the next thing is going to be to figure out the dress. I don't know if I want like a big draping kind of dress that maybe can kind of hang over the edges a little bit or one that's not as drapey and maybe just kind of drapes a little bit here or something that maybe is a little bit more form fitted in a small way. I'm not sure yet. I'll have to figure that out. I haven't quite got to that point yet. Then I got to do the arms. 
I have an idea of exactly what I want to do with the arms, but it's just a matter of uh, if it's actually going to work or not. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, after that, pretty much the next step is just going to be that if there's no, no other details or anything else that I want to do to it, and I think I'm good with it, good with it depending on you know these or not, uh, then I'll just go ahead and get ready to start painting it. But for the time being, everything is still wet. All the caulking is still wet that I have on there, so I'm going to have to let that sit and dry. I can't really do anything else with it for now. So uh, once all that's done and dry, then I'll go ahead and uh, get to the next step. Okay, I've made it to this point right here. Now, I, I, everything's all dry. The caulk is all dry. I haven't decided what, what I'm going to do in the squares just yet, but I did make a pretty big design change. My original plan was to obviously have this laying flat uh, and have the front kind of elevated up a little bit and that kind of stuff. But since I technically already have one that's that way, outside of the base being bigger, uh, I want to do something different. I really don't want to have two of them that look the same. So I went back online. I started typing in like graveyard statues, cemetery statues, sitting, kneeling, all that kind of stuff. And I think I found one that's gonna that will still work with what I've already started to make here. And what it's gonna be is it's gonna it's gonna be an angel sitting on it. Now it's not gonna be sitting on it like the knees are gonna kind of come up here and it's gonna kind of come up kind of thing. Uh, it'll be sitting like up, you know over the edge of it. So the legs and dress will be hanging over the edge of it. It'll be sitting up right right here. And then I'm gonna be attempting to make wings. Uh, the wings in the picture kind of come up. They curve down. And they, once they get towards the base, then they kind of feather out a little bit. So I'm going to essentially attempt to make that. And I've never made wings before, so hopefully this works out for me. And then it's also going to be attached to its own separate structure so it can be removed. And obviously, I'll be I'll be showing all that as I move along. So I'm going to start off by making a few cuts here so I can do that. But the good thing about this being fiberglass is uh, once I make the cuts, I can add more fiberglass to it to round everything back out. So this when I go to do the dress, you don't see like hard 90 degree you know, corners. I'll be able to Float, round it out and then when I get to the kneecaps round it out again so this way it still looks good when I'm done so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get started on that So essentially all I was doing here is obviously I got to recreate the, the kneecap area. So once I got everything put back on, I just took up just a block of foam, stuck it on there, traced it both ways, cut cut, it, cut the rough shape out, glued it on, and then just used just a regular rasp, nothing special, to shape it into a kneecap shape. Uh, now obviously uh, anybody that's maybe never done anything with fiberglass before, fiberglass and styrofoam don't get along. That's why you see I got the plastic here, and I'm going to have to wrap masking tape on here. So when I go to do my fiberglass and overlap it, uh, the fiberglass will still stick really good here. I'm just going to cover the kneecap only with masking tape so it doesn't melt it. I mean, and then I'm probably going to take a little bit of masking tape and go from here to here up this area. So this way I don't have a little sink in. So this way I can get a nice transition across here and that side. And I'll, I'll lay I'll lay a couple layers of fiberglass there and here. And what that's going to do is that's going to completely re-strengthen the whole corners again. Plus, it's attached to the board in the back. So I'm going to start working on the fiberglass. Okay, I made it to this point. Um, oh, I got all the resin on. Uh, I forgot to press play on my camera, so I don't have any, you know, footage of me putting the fiberglass on here. So I'm sorry about that. But I just used uh, regular fiberglass matting with uh, just the resin. Put it over the knee. Put two layers on there. Uh, kind of went across the side here from the back to about here. So that's all solid with two pieces, especially in the joint right here. Once that dries and hardens, that's going to make that thing nice and rigid again. And then I got to work on the wings. What well, my plan is for the wings is in the back here i'm going to do like a uh, pvc support system with two fittings coming out and what that's gonna, what that's going to do is that's going to allow me to make it to where i get when I, after i put the dress on it i can take the wings i can lock them into it and then when i got to store it i can pull the wings out and then i, I got to build this back out a little bit anyway so what i'll be doing after i get the pvc in there and get it the way i want it i'm going to put some cardboard on here and i'm going to fill this with some more foam 
So this way I can carve it down and make it look more natural. So when the dress is on there, because I don't want this to be a one-sided prop. If someone's walking around it, I want it to look like it's supposed to. So that's just an extra step I'm going to have to do since I did a design change. All right, I got the rig uh, mounted in here. You see I got a couple screws going through it there and a couple screws going through there. What that's for is that's just to make sure that this can't, you know, rock like this after the fact. Uh, now, this is only temporary. I, I don't have any regular uh, straight couplers. I'll have to get it some. But you can see where this is going to allow me to pull this off. When I fill this full of expansion foam and carve it down, I'll let these sit out just enough to where when I do the wings, the wings can just pop right on there just like that. And then my plan is is to run more PVC on these down a little bit further. Uh, I want to put those completely inside the foam because I want the foam to have a little rigidity to it so it doesn't want to like warp or anything like that in the sun. And the picture that I'm using as a reference kind of shows the wings coming out just above the shoulders, kind of like where I have them at the moment. Let me bring that one down a little bit and almost level at the top of the head. So that's essentially the reference I'm going with. Now, obviously, I'm going to use the foam to make it nice and rounded. I'm not going to use the PVC for that because I want to try to keep the PVC as rigid as possible. But the, the PVC and the foam will come down at a slight angle this way and then kind of curve at the last second. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to be working on those uh, while I'm uh, letting the expansion foam fill the backside. And then I'll be able to continue on with, uh, you know, getting the head mounted, figuring out how I'm going to do the arms, and then work on to... Uh, the clothing and then paint. Okay, I went ahead and uh, filled the back with uh, the expansion foam. Uh, you can see where I just took some cardboard and some cinder blocks and pushed it tight up against the fiberglass form to try to make sure that the foam stayed where I needed it to stay. Uh, I don't know if anybody's used this stuff before. I've used it a few times for a fence post. You have your activator and then you have your foam stuff. You essentially roll this over till you break the seal here you shake it up really good for about 15 seconds cut it open and then just pour it and it just expands and this stuff expands pretty good it's pretty this stuff's pretty rock solid when it uh, dries you can see where i you know since you encapsulated the pipes uh not didn't quite get a little right there but you know these uh pipes be nice and you know encapsulated in there where they're not going to move or shift now I'll just uh give this till tomorrow to make sure it's fully cured I'll pull the cardboard off and I'll go ahead and start, you know, shaping and cutting and getting this to the shape that I want it to be. And then after that, then I will start uh, getting the wings made and then start figuring out how I'm going to do the dressing and we will be moving forward from there. I'm going to do is uh, I have the mannequin out here. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make measurements of you know, here, you know, here, here, and like in that area. I'm going to transfer those measurements, you know, across here and then draw a line and try to get the rough shape like this of what it's going to be. And then, after I get that rough shape, then I'll use a rasp and I'll, I'll, I'll kind of refine it from there. So, I'm going to go ahead and get started by making some measurements, drawing some lines, and go from there. Okay, I pretty much got it all carved and shaped out. Now I'm gonna uh, start working on uh, the wings 
and then I'll figure out how I'm gonna make the dress and then go from there. Okay, I've gotten started with the wings. You can see where I just uh, took the foam board and I uh, cut it and glued it to fit in between the PVC pipes. Now I did that because I wanted to have a nice rigid edge on the outside. So this way if say something bumped it or something like that, it's not gonna tear my wing up. Uh, and it also gives me a nice, nice straight, you know, line all the way around. And then I'll dress up the backside. I have the tape obviously on there till the caulking dries. And then you can see I added an extra piece to the top here. This is kind of the, the part of the wing where it's extra thick, you know, where it comes out of the uh, the body, essentially. It's extra thick. This will be sanded down a little bit uh, to round it out. And then once the glue dries, I'll be taking all the foil off here. So this way I can try to carve a bunch of feather kind of looks to it. But I'm uh, getting started on the wings. The only thing I haven't decided just yet is how much of the wing do I want to see out from behind the body. Do I want to kind of cut this and make it kind of come here like this, like it's kind of curving with this curve? Uh, or do I want to keep it behind there? So I'm going to kind of play with, uh, you know, taking some, you know, marker and kind of drawing and kind of getting some ideas uh, if I want to do that or if I just want to leave it solid like that. The one reason why I left that plywood extra long back here um, and haven't cut it yet was because my plan was is to have a place to attach the wings to. But now that I've decided to make the wings removable, you know, for storage purposes, uh, attaching it to here is probably not gonna be needed now. So I'll probably gonna just cut this straight off right, right at the base here. So when I put the dress on it, the dress can cur curve up underneath there. But just gotta wait for that to dry so I can start working on the next part of it. All right, fast forward, I've made it to this part right here. I've um, been working on the arms a little bit. I end up with a extra set of mannequin arms uh, from my 2021 display. Uh, I just been kind of, they just been sitting on a shelf, which I'm glad I held on to them because they were good for this. The only bummer was is it's a shame they didn't have more bend to them where I could have used the whole thing. Uh, I had to cut it off here in order to try to get it to where I wanted. Otherwise, the original ones would have been more like way out here and they, they wouldn't have looked right. Uh, and then the other thing is, is because of the shape of this one, how it curves so much for it to kind of sit good. You see where I kind of have them sit off to the side a little bit. So you see where I took the uh, the head and also turned the head a little bit. So this way the head kind of lines up with that. So what I'll do is when I actually have it set on here, I'm going to have it sit at a little bit of an angle. So it kind of looks like she's kind of sitting kind of sideways a little bit. Uh, so it kind of maybe works with that. Or I might just keep it straight. I don't know. I'm still t uh, thinking about that idea. I did go through our Halloween stuff. I found a foot. Unfortunately, I don't have a right and a left. All I have is rights. So I went ahead and put that on there. So what my plan is, is when we do the dress, the dress will come down and overlap this foot and kind of hang down a little bit into this area. And then kind of curve up a little bit onto this one and then go back. So it gives a, a little bit of detail. You know, So at least you see somewhat of a foot, not just something going all the way down, just to add a little more uh, realism to the statue, I guess you can say. Uh, I made it to this point right here. I'm fixing to put the clothing on it. Uh, now, I wasn't able to find a one-piece dress that would cover the entire thing and then come down with long enough sleeves to, uh, to cover the transition from the food noodles to the forearm. So it's going to be done in two pieces. Uh, first, got a, just a regular kind of dress deal. Uh, it's gonna, it'll essentially go to a certain point. Obviously, when it's on, it comes up a little higher. It comes up to about here. And then I have a secondary one, that, which is almost pretty much the same exact fabric. So. Uh, it should be much different. Plus, I got the arms that are going to be kind of draping down, so it kind of hides it a little bit. 
And this is going to go from here up to here and then come down the arms. Then what I'll be doing is after I put the bottom piece on, I'll be screwing a piece of wood to the bottom here. And what this is going to be for is because I'm pretty sure I'm going to have a little bit of fabric that's going to kind of drape a little bit. And I want it to drape and dry on top of a piece of wood. So this way I can, after it's dry, I'll put these staples in it that I can hide later. What that'll do is so when I go to remove the prop, I don't have to worry about any of the fabric that's, say, kind of sitting like this and doing this. And potentially maybe crack in the paint or anything of that nature. You know, because it is fabric and it's never going to be rock solid no matter what you do. I mean, you can get it pretty good, but you never get it rock solid kind of thing. So this will just kind of give me a little bit like a, a base for it to actually sit on top of. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to literally dunk this in a five-gallon jug of paint. I'm not going to do the whole paint mortar uh, kind of thing because I want to be able to really have time to work with this and really get it just the way I want it and just let it dry. And I'll do my normal painting process that I've done on all my other props where I just take and, you know, I'll paint it, make it wet, throw my mortar mix on there, let it dry, then I'll put a second coat over top of that to seal it in. And it'll, it'll, still, be, it'll still work out the same way as I would have done it before, but... I'm just going to saturate this first and let it dry. Now, this portion doesn't matter what color paint you use because you're going to be painting it a second time anyways. So I, I just got a five-gallon jug of uh, some mist, mist paint that I got from a paint company. Uh, they let me have it super cheap. So, uh, you know, I'm going to be painting it a second time anyways, so it really doesn't matter what the color is. So I'm going to go ahead and get started by soaking this and uh, getting this all put on the form, sit it up, put the secondary piece on, pin everything in place, and then let it dry. Get a little headdress on it. I also put a little, uh, you know, hair up in here just so you can see a little bit of hair. Now, once this thing is uh, completely dry, I'll make the little holes in the back, little cutouts for where the wings got to go, and then we might be able to start working on doing a painting for the entire prop. Okay, I've been uh, kind of tinkering with the wings a little bit. Uh, now, this is my very first time ever doing any kind of prop that that's like an angel prop with wings, feathers, the whole nine yards. So go, go easy on me a little bit here. Uh, all I'm really trying to do is I'm just trying to give it the illusion of feathers. Because once this thing is fully painted, it's darkened up, it's aged, it's going to be in the dark. It's going to have just ambient lighting showing on it and stuff like that. Realistically, all I'm kind of going for is just the outline of what is you know like a feather simulation i guess you can say so when you're looking at it it looks like there's something you know like feathers there even though it's not really feathers i did look online to try to see what it cost to buy a bunch of feathers and glue them on there but i'd have to do all four sides because depending on where i put this in my cemetery this might be viewed 360 degrees so i can't only do this side right here i got to do both sides and that's how i'm treating this entire prop is both sides are going to be viewed so i just went the much cheaper alternative and just used the caulking cover the entire thing with caulking and then use the screwdriver to kind of create my my little swoops and stuff like that. Now I'm trying to model the overall look of this uh, from my reference picture that I'm using for the whole angel portion of this prop right here. So that's kind of where I kind of got the overall, you know, shape, I guess you can say. And like I said, I did do both sides because I don't know, as like I said, this is going to be viewed all the way around or not. So you see I got the back side is done as well. Uh, I still got to finish this up as soon as the caulking dries. I got to peel this foil off and I'm going to sand this down so it's, you know, really thin and smooth and stuff like that. That's essentially kind of like the front. It kind of simulates the the main, you know, backbone, I guess you can say, of the wing itself. And you can also see where I kind of have like, I did kind of like texture, did like lines and stuff like that on it to uh, give it a little more of a look to it. So all I did there is I just used a piece of cedar shim 
that's kind of jagged on the end. And just as the uh, caulking got to where it was just getting to where it's hard to work with anymore, I just lightly went over it to kind of, you know, feather it out and um, to kind of give it a little bit of realism to them. But the next step now is to go ahead and uh, get these all painted uh, the same neutral color as the statue, get the base painted, and then start doing the aging process. And uh, let's see what this thing looks like all done. Okay, I, uh, I actually found something that I'm going to use for inside these boxes. Uh, we went ahead and we found these little crosses here. They're just a thin piece of wood cross. I kind of like them because uh, they're not just a basic rectangle kind of cross. They have a little character to them. And I figure with being that I'm putting an angel on here, the crosses will kind of tie into it. So it kind of ties the two pieces together. So it kind of looks like they were made for each other, essentially. So I thought this would be kind of a, a good little thing that you'll have inside each one of these. I've already started making a few reference points uh, of essentially exactly where it's going to sit within this space. Uh, so that's why I have the same amount of distance, you know, from side to side, top to bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, finish measuring out all of them, get these glued into place. Uh, once those are all glued in and uh, everything's dry, uh, at that point I'll be ready to uh, start doing a little distressing. I'm going to break some of these little edges off, kind of give it a little bit of distressing, and then get ready to get it all, get the whole base painted, get the angel painted, and uh, you know, show the final product. All right, getting ready to start the painting. I'm going to be painting this one a little different than the other ones. Uh, what I'm going to do is after I have the whole thing uh, painted, I'm going to show the reference picture that I've been kind of using for the entire uh, uh, process. So I got to get the base painted first, and then the angel will be painted after that. All right, I got the base about 90% done. Once I put the angel on top, then I will finish the last little bit of aging because obviously I'm going to have runoff you know, from her wings and stuff like that, that I'm going to have to make, you know, water tracks and stuff like that. So uh, I got this about 90% done. So I just got to uh, paint her next and then marry the two together and finish it up. I'm doing a last minute detail before I paint it. What I decided to do is take some caulking and kind of come down and make it look like the feathers are kind of laying down on top of it. So as they're coming down, so essentially what I'll do is, uh, once that's dry, I'll go ahead and get this painted. And then I will get the two together so I can finish the aging of the two together. And we will see the finished product. Okay, uh, the prop is fully done. Before I show you that uh, finished product, I want to show you something real quick. I remember the uh, video started off with uh, essentially this is uh, the piece I was going to use to essentially create the main form for the prop. So what I'm going to do is before I uh, show the final product, I'm going to go ahead and show you that picture that I was talking about as I was using the reference picture. Now, obviously, I didn't follow it to the T. I just kind of use it as my base platform, I guess you can say, for the overall design that I wanted to do. Because remember, I made that huge design change from uh, originally laying down to the sitting angel. So I'm going to show you that picture real fast, and then I will show you the uh, final product. All right, here she is, all done. Now, we just added those flowers for now, just temporary, uh, until we find, you know, something that we might like better. That's just some stuff that I have from previous projects. So I just stuck them in there to try to give it a, you know, a completed look. But since uh, this prop might be viewed 360 degrees, depending on where I have it staged in my display this year, I made sure that the whole back was also fully done. And you see that last minute detail that I did with the, you know, the whole, you know, feathers kind of draping down. I think turned out really good. I like the way that turned out. Get my shadow out of the way here. I just kind of looked at it as, you know, she had wings that big and she's sitting down. The wings are going to want to like kind of taper like this as it goes. So I went ahead and made that last second change. I did have a little bit of fun trying to create... Uh, the whole bronze, you know, kind of statue look 
and with the oxidation trying to get just the right amount of green with just the right amount of bronze coming through for you know essentially kind of figuring the overall age i guess you can say of what the prop is supposed to you know kind of look like so i definitely had a little bit of fun with that i would add a little add a little bronze again then I add a little green again then a little bit of bronze i think i got it right where i think i'm pretty happy with it so i'm going to leave it alone i don't want to go too much because then i might get it to where i don't like it so i think uh it's going to stay where it's at but all in all i think this one actually came out pretty good leave me a comment tell me what you think about it if you like this video hit that like button subscribe and as always thanks for watching